morning, everyone. Hope your uh, your weekend's going well. And uh, apologize for having to cancel a couple of weeks, but we did it just uh, for everyone's safety, for uh, some of the outbreaks that are going on. So uh, we'll be together soon. We'll take this Sunday and next Sunday and just wait and um, see how things are. And then we'll plan on meeting again after that, uh, just based on how everything's going. But uh, I hope everything's going well. I'm going to talk a little bit this morning. I'm not going to talk very long. Um, but just going to share some of the things that uh, I feel that the Lord's been leading us in and the direction for kind of um, the way everything's going. Um, and I want to read out of uh, Micah this morning, uh, Micah chapter 5. And we're going to read verses 1 through 5. And then I'm going to jump around a little bit. Like I said, this isn't going to be very long. But uh, just want to share some of the things that we've been praying about. Uh, but Micah... Chapter 5, starting verse 1, going to verse 5. It says, Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, uh, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, of old, from everlasting. Therefore will, I, will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. And he shall stand and feed the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall abide. For now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. And this man shall be the peace when the Assyrian shall come into our land. And when he shall tread in our palaces Then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. Obviously, this is talking about um, our Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. And Israel is going through a time when uh, armies were laying siege to uh, Jerusalem, to Bethlehem. And um, things are happening that are causing distress in their country. And they are looking forward to a time when the Savior, the Prince of Peace, is going to reside or come out of Bethlehem, and and He then will be their peace as they are uh, under such duress or distress. And I think peace for them, and obviously for us, is always something that we want. Peace is nice. And uh, when we have peace, then we feel a a sense of tranquility and a sense of calm. It makes us calm. Um, and sometimes it's, it's anything we, and everything we ever want that we just want, Lord, give me my peace. I, I don't care if there's nothing else, Lord, give me my peace. And sometimes things seem so heavy and hard that that's our prayer. And I can tell you in the midst of everything that is happening in this day and age, everything that is happening in our lives, we truly can have peace in the midst of it. Um, we don't have to be plagued by what's going on in the country, by what's going on on our TV. We don't have to be distressed uh, about underhanded things that happen around us, maybe even to us. But in the midst of all those things, we truly can have the peace of the Lord. As a matter of fact, we were designed to have the peace of the Lord. And so I encourage you this morning, and uh, and more than encourage you this morning, to uh, dive in to the peace of the Lord and what He has made for you, what He has given you, and what you can rest in uh, when you know that you are saved, that you are a child of God, that you have been redeemed. You can have the peace of the Lord. The question is, are you going to accept His peace? Are you going to live in His peace? And are you going to choose to move away from the things that try to surround you, the things that try to steal your peace? But we can accept peace. And it seems like there are times when peace is hard to come by. Um, We've seen periods of history that seem like there's, we have years and years of supposed peace, and then there's years and years of what seems to be some type of war that's going on. Um, But over the last 3,100 years, um, out of the 3,100 years, 286 of those, only 286 of those years have been enjoyed without the presence of war. And so it seems like mankind is always in some kind of tumultuous existence um, that they, they seem to get into, get out of. Maybe they're out of it for a short time, but then they're back into some type of war. So there's always some type of, of stir going on on the earth. And there's also always attempting to be some type of stir that goes on within us. And we know that the enemy 
who is against us is constantly trying to stir us, that's constantly trying to steal the peace that Jesus Christ came to give us and live in. And in the midst of tumultuous times, in the midst of, of the unrest, He's given us the ability to have peace and thank God for that. But we can have peace, inner peace. We can have peace in our homes. We can have peace in our workplaces. We can have peace in our finances. We can have peace uh, with our, our friendships and our relationships. And that true peace only comes from Jesus Christ. So in a day and an age like this, and a day and an age when it seems like there's so many underhand things going on. There's so many crooked things going on. There's so many things that we could stand up and rail against and, and cry foul about everything that's happening. We don't have to, but what we can do is in the midst of those things, know that God is in control, truly. That He is our peace. That He has appointed us for a purpose. And in His purpose, I have peace. And so you can have that peace in the midst of everything that's going on. In Micah 5, Israel lost their peace. And they're being disciplined by God. And the Assyrians are invading their country. And it seems like as they are surrounded by the Assyrian army, that they have no hope. There's no hope. And it seems like all peace is gone. And every day, it becomes more and more discouraging. And it's, it's almost like we're saying today, how far can this go? How bad can it get before God steps in? And I think many people cry, God, where are you in the midst of everything that's going on? But we have to understand that even in the midst of all the discouragement, all the unrest, that God still loves us with an everlasting love. And He still loved Israel with an everlasting love. And He sends Micah the prophet to tell Israel uh, about his message that true peace was coming. And he was talking about the coming of Jesus Christ. And we can say that today, that true peace is coming. Matter of fact, we can have true peace because He's here inside of us, but Jesus Christ is again returning. And He's going to bring peace that's going to sweep all across the land because He's going to defeat His enemies with a word. One word. It's no contest. So we know He's coming. And in the midst of His coming and the waiting for His coming, we don't just sit idly by and wait, but we get to work in the work that He's called us to do. Time is, is short. And I don't say that as, as something that uh, we, we fear, but it's something that we can be excited about, knowing, Lord, in the, in the time that I have on this earth, and the time that You've allotted for me before You come, Lord, let me do Your work. Let me be busy doing Your work. Because He is coming soon. And it, with Him comes the armies of the Lord. It comes the truth of His sword. It comes the peace when you know Him and you are called by His name. And we can live by that today. In Micah 5.5 5, it says that He would be their peace. Saying that the, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ would be their peace. Has your peace been stolen? For whatever else is going on, it may be something in your family, it may be something in your finances, it may be something personally that's going on, but have, has the enemy stolen your peace? Have you been watching too much news, believing everything every newscaster uh, has said on TV or every uh, commentator has said on TV, and you have let that override the peace of God that comes through knowing His Word and knowing who He is personally? Don't let it steal your peace. Don't let Satan's voice in your ear. Don't let it root down in your heart and take away the very thing that God has given to you through Jesus Christ, and that is His peace. You can live in that peace, and in peace is power. In peace is strength. And we need that strength today to accomplish what He's done. If you are sitting idly by, if you are in the church, outside of the church, around the church, and you have decided you're just going to listen, and what possibly could you do? I'm telling you, that's an improper stance. And God has called you to something specific. Something joined in with the body of Christ. Are you accepting the obligation? Maybe that has stolen your peace. Have you taken up arms against the enemy of our souls? Against what's going on and decided, I'm going to fight and I'm going to work for the Lord until He comes again. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace, and 
Obviously, one of the ways He's given us peace is through forgiveness of sins. We can have His peace through that. So if that's something that you struggle with and you say, Lord, you just don't understand, or, or Bill, you don't understand, or John, you don't understand about me that I have so much heaviness from my sins, and what do I do? Well, Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace, and He came for you to forgive your sins. One of the uh, early Christian fathers, you know, the church fathers in, in the first century, his name was Jerome, he wrote, in a book that he had a dream one night, and in the dream, Jesus Christ visited him. And in the dream, Jerome was excited that Jesus had visited him, and so he collected all the money he had. He collected it. He got it all together, and, and he went to Jesus, and he offered it to Jesus as a gift. And Jesus said to him, Jerome, I don't want your money. And so Jerome thought for a minute, and he thought, well, if he doesn't want my money, I'll give him all my possessions. So he went around, he collected all his possessions, and he rounded up everything he owned, all his possessions, and he came to Jesus and he gave it to him as a gift. And Jesus said, Jerome, I don't want your possessions. And so Jerome was puzzled, and he turned to Jesus and he said, well, what can I give you? What do you want? And Jesus replied by saying this. He said, give me your sins, because that's what I came for. I came to take away all your sins. So what is the peace that Christ, Christ gives, Jesus Christ gives? Well, it starts with He gives forgiveness of sins. So if you're struggling with your sin, you're, you can't get over it yourself, maybe it's time to give those to Jesus Christ. That's what He wants, for you to give Him your sin. To not take it yourself, to not carry it yourself, but to come to Him and offer it to Him and say, Lord, I, I lay all this down at your feet. Forgive me, cleanse me. I come to you as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me for all my sin. I accept you as Jesus Christ, my Lord. And in comes an influx of peace because Satan has no more hold on you. That's the first way we get peace. Second way, and there's more than two ways, but I'm only talking about two. The second way is we are secured in God's peace by Jesus Christ doing His will. And He's called us all to do His will. And I think many have taken a back seat, saying, what possibly could I do? But now is the day to get active. Now is the day to get busy doing the work of the Lord. Many are so scared that they don't want to do the work of the Lord. They think doing the work of the Lord means something else. It means more sacrifice than they're willing to give. But you truly won't ever be happy ever be satisfied until you're doing what He has called you to do specifically. And you say, well, how do I know that? How, do, how can I tell? But I say this, is it, the more you time you spend with Jesus Christ, the more time you spend with Him, the more you know specifically what He's called you to do, how He's called you to act in this last day especially. I'm not saying it's something wild and crazy, but it's something that you are already close to that's right outside your door, that's associated possibly with the church that you're associated with, and He's called you to act and move, not to sit idly by. In John 17, I heard this this weekend, and it hit me pretty hard, but in John 17, uh, 13, and I'm going to jump to verse 15, it says, And now come I to thee. And Jesus is, 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 is praying to the Father. And He says, Now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. So he's, he's saying, the, the disciples, the people that you gave me, Father, I'm speaking this because in this world, they can have my joy fulfilled in themselves. They can have my peace. They can have my joy. And he says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. So we want so bad. Lord, we, we, and we'll say it sometimes, Lord, just come back. Just, just take care of all this. You know, the election, it's awful, and, and the, the uh, deception, it's awful, and the, the, the crookedness is awful, and all these things. And we say, Lord, just come back. But what is the Lord saying to us before He comes back? Because He is the Prince of Peace. He's given us perfect peace. And sometimes we allow the enemy to steal our peace. But what has God said to us? before he's come back. And he prays to the Father. He said, I pray, Lord, that thou shouldest take them, 
that not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou should keep them from the evil. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And what he's saying is, Lord, don't take them out of the world, because you've placed them in the world for this purpose. You've placed them in the world for a reason. But I pray you just keep them from evil. It's easier to be kept from evil as we are swinging the sword of the Lord than it is to just sit idly by and refuse to swing that sword. But we've got to take stock and say, Lord, you've called me to this time, to this place, in this way, specifically for myself, not for them. We can't point our fingers and say, well, they should go do this and they should go do that. And, and uh, I just want to be a part of it. But he's called us specifically individually, maybe collectively, but individually, certainly he's called us to do something very specific. Don't sit idly by. If you've lost your peace, but your sins are forgiven, maybe he's calling you to do something that you just haven't done yet. It's, it's a day and an age when we have to live completely by faith. We can no longer decide that we're going to live by sight because we will literally perish if we live only by sight. We have been called out of the world. We've been called out of the, this day and age. We've been called out of this, this evil kingdom into Jesus Christ's kingdom. So we're equipped to live in this day and age as people of faith. Don't get lulled to sleep. Believing what you see. Going to work nine to five and only that. Thinking that that's all there is. God has given you the ability to see with spiritual eyes. To live by faith. To have different purposes. To have different uh, motivations in this earth. And so his prayer for you is, is perfect. Because as you live by faith, the thing that you need the most is that you're not taken out of the world, but that you are kept from evil. Because evil will certainly come at us. But how exciting it is in this day and age, in this time, to decide, I'm going to live my faith. Lord, I'm going to do whatever you've called me to do. That's my mandate for this end times. Lord, it doesn't matter who's elected president. It doesn't matter what politicians are doing. It doesn't matter what CBS or Fox News or ABC says. It, what it matters, Lord, is what you've told me to do in this last day. You will keep me. You will protect me. You will provide for me. And Lord, my mandate is to listen to you and do your will. My peace comes through the fact that I'm a child of God first, that my sins are forgiven. But after that, my peace continues because I'm walking in the Lord's will. I'm doing what the Lord has called me to do. I believe that People say, why did the election turn out the way it did? And we prayed so hard and, and things are, are seem so upside down in this world. But I believe that he's calling his church back, not, not to get someone reelected, which what a blessing it would to have someone who was in the office, who believed in the sanctity of life, who believed in truth, who lived and supported religious freedom. I, I agree with all that. But I think he's calling his church to decide to give up creature comforts, to get on their knees again, and not just get on their knees when something bad happens, but to live on their knees and to live for Him. To decide that I'm going to live by faith like I've never lived before. I'm going to make decisions not based upon common sense, but I'm going to make decisions based upon prayer and based upon the Word of God only. That's what we need to return to. That's what we need to live by. I'm so glad the political season's over and we're probably still getting into a time where there's going to be everything hashed out and, and, and uh, things are going to be crazy on the television, but it doesn't need to change the peace that we have inside. And if it starts to do that, question it and say, Lord, should I give this up? Because I need to live in my peace for you. Lord, tell me what you want me to do for you. You can be glad that you have access to that peace. You can be glad that you are able to live by the faith of Jesus Christ. So decide to do that today. He is the Prince of Peace, and He has given you the ability to live in peace through everything. You can see so many examples in the Bible where He has called His people to tumultuous times 
But in the midst of tumultuous times, he'd give them peace because they decided that they were going to live by and for him. We can look at David. We can look at Daniel. We can look at Moses. We can look at the disciples. We can look at Jonah. We can look at Jeremiah. And all those people, in the midst of all the the, the tumultuous things that were going on in their lives, all the unrest that was on the outside, they decided, I'm going to have the peace of God inside. And you can have that peace too. Are you willing to do that today? Will you pray with me? Father, we love you. And Lord, we thank you. Father, that in a time like this, you've called us. That in a time like this, that we have everything that we need. We have you. And Lord, you supply everything for us. Lord, we don't need to live in fear. We don't need to listen to the enemy, Lord, that speaks through other people, that speaks through the news, that speaks through uh, many different methods, Lord. But Father, we can tune all those things out and we can hear your voice. We can listen to you. Father, we thank you. Lord, I pray that you would just speak to each one. Father, as they take that time and they meet with you, that they dedicate time with you, Father, that you would give them direction. Father, give them peace. Father, if they don't know you, that they would accept you, but after they know you, Father, give them peace as they walk and do the things that you've called them to do. Lord, let us be a motivated, called army of God. There's so much work to be done, Lord. Father, and we've gotten so distracted. Call us back to be focused on only you, Lord. Lord, help us to do that. Father, we give you praise. Lord, help us not to just put this message down. But Lord, let it reverberate inside of us and let it change us forever. We praise you, Lord. You're worthy. In Jesus' name, amen.